This is The Boys Season 4 podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about the sixth episode of The Boys Season 4, Dirty Business. Web Weaver! Whoosh. You made it! <laughs> oh, it's so good to meet you in person. Finally. <laughs> I feel like I already know you. Yeah, no, me too. No, uh, Cap? Really, I'm honored that you would even consider the sidekick gig. I know it's a big change, but if tonight goes well, it's yours. Oh, uh, well, well, great. Mm-hmm. Um, that's great. Well, you know, I've never been to a, an estate before. Mm. Um, do you guys have stables? <laughs> Let's get the tour started inside. Okay. okay. <laughs> Come <All right>. on. <laughs> Welcome back, fellow boys and girls, to the sixth episode of The Boys Season 4. We're talking about dirty business on TV Podcast Industries. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow boys. I hope you come ready with your tickling sticks as well as your hand sanitizer uh, for this episode of The Boys Season 4. Uh, yes, I'm one of your other hosts, John. Yeah, do you have your um, chocolate birthday cake, John? Uh, just ready to sort of get my butt cheeks sort of squished in amongst that soft sponge so and weird. frosting. Mm, yes, so weird. Yes, we are, of course, going to be talking spoiler-filled about this episode yes. of The Boys uh, Season 4. No one light the candles, yeah, please. Yeah, don't, don't light the candles don't beforehand, the certainly. Candles. Yeah. Yes. Although, again, you never know what's going <laughs> to what's gonna turn out tech, tech night uh, in this episode. Uh, Another crazy episode of The Boys this week. John. Should we start out with our feedback on last week's episode before we get into uh, this week's episode in full spoiler filled detail? Sure, why not? Let us uh, ramp up slowly, or should I say firm and steady. Uh, we should ramp this up, I think. Uh-huh, yes, absolutely. before the full penetration of our uh, episode six. <laughs> well, there was a lot that happened in last week's episode as well that I want to that uh, cover true. through our feedback. So we'll start out with an email from Coffee and Vodka who said, Greetings fellow down on the farm defenders. A full one indeed. Huey Senior, we barely knew you. Rest in shadow cat peace. A couple of God you not so good nicks didn't get a good look at Kate's formerly missing arm. Is it a prosthetic maybe? But back, hinting at a villain turn. Frenchie seeking absolution, the only way you can think of. The origin of Mad God Heroes. A much stronger Huey Jr. A deadbeat mom I still don't trust. Old McDonald's farm as you'd never want to live it. And as usual, so much more. Not gonna let recency bias allow me to write this unfinished season, but it'll probably tie for first along with the previous three. So tight, so round, so fully packed, loving every second of it. Five bunnyborn trampled temp V tent Strange bedfellows and ba ba jacked sheep out of five. Peace and take care. Coffee and vodka. <laughs> well, coffee and vodka. Are you sure you haven't seen a sneak preview of episode six? With so tight, so round, and so fully packed, um, it does feel as though we're in the tech cave. It does sound like the tech cave from this episode, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> but you have outdone yourself with your ratings this week, Coffee and Vodka. Um, really, really like Baba Jack Sheep. <laughs> that's, that's excellent. I'm shocked yeah, that it, that didn't come through in the episode itself. <laughs> Absolutely. But as for the things that uh, Cafe and Vodka mentioned here, um, there's actually another mention about uh, about Shadow Cat's powers from uh, from the comic books, from Marvel comic books, uh, that she can do something similar to what um, Huey Senior was able to do, uh, warp through walls and uh, appear yeah. that way. So uh, that's an interesting call out. I didn't even think of that uh, when we were watching the episode at all. I must say, it just didn't cross my mind at all. Yeah, didn't just didn't get get there. But thanks for pointing that one out. And as for Kate's arm, yeah, we didn't mention it uh, on the episode, but we only saw them for a very short amount of time. Um, behind the podium and then right at the end of the episode but uh, yeah entirely possible that they've hidden uh, her arm uh, behind a glove and a prosthetic arm uh, yeah I'd say so explain later they'll, they'll leave it to, for explanation in Gen V uh, season 2 maybe <laughs> I would say so yeah yeah, yeah. thanks Coffee and Vodka yeah thanks again Coffee and Vodka let's go on to some other feedback uh, f- 
we got an email in from Merrill as well. Yes, Merrill said, I continue to love every time Newman is on screen. She has a bigger picture way of thinking than the other characters. Mm. Interesting little power struggle going on between Firecracker and Sage. I expected that a crossover between the two shows would have been the most minimal as it could have been. But what I did expect is we would get Tech Knight referencing the whole truth in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So which item with a whole in did he go for this time also what did sage show him homelander continues to show his corrupting influence over the next generation Mm -hmm. and mother's milk really is the best dad on the show telling everyone to get past their personal bs and work together i was not expecting hugh senior to turn into shadow cat but it made for a nice emotional scene in the end with the whole family I'm more convinced that Butcher's Friend is in his head after this episode. But overall, I'd give it five veed psycho sheeps with infectious disease out of five Meryl. Excellent. Good stuff, Meryl. Yes. Um, Another five out of five. Mm Mm-hmm. Excellent. It was excellent last week. It was. It really was. It was. And as you can probably see if you watched uh, the sixth episode of The Boys, a lot of your questions from last week actually get answered in this episode, don't they? They do, actually. Yeah. Although I think the beef between Firecracker and Sage is still going on, but it is mm-hmm. an interesting dynamic, I think. It certainly you is. Know, two of the newbies in one, effectively, I guess Sage would consider to be as dumb as hell yeah. uh, in Firecracker. And mm-hmm. Firecracker almost probably views Sister Sage as who she's trying to disenfranchise really is well exactly sort of intelligent people yeah you know yeah. with her sort of crazy podcasts and now face of vault news exactly yeah yeah um there's lots to talk about in this episode about what happens with those characters as well yeah um but there's one thing that's that you mentioned there uh meryl that just uh, spark, sparked a memory in my mind from during the week this week about the whole of, of the campbell family getting together a really great gift that was given to um the actor who plays Huey, Huey Senior, uh, Simon Pegg, uh, when he finished up on the show, he was presented with a T-shirt by Jack Quaid uh, of the Campbell soup, uh, <laughs> representing the Campbell family. I had a picture of all of them drawn on it uh, as well as his leaving gift, uh, finishing up on the show. Uh, thanks to Claire Payne for sending that on to us as well. A uh, good little, uh, good little gift yeah. to, to give to, the, to give to Simon on his last day on the on the set. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Meryl. Yeah, thanks, Meryl. Over on our Facebook group, first up, Jamie Lawton says, Goodbye to Simon Pegg, one of the reasons why I first got into the boys' show when I first heard that he was going to be in it. Also, I thought it looked like he was getting younger as his hair got darker, then finally lighter as he passed away. Finally, a quick side note, I watched Spaced the other day, and in one episode, Simon Pegg's character goes off on a rant about how much he hates Jar Jar Binks, and in this episode, he talks about their cat being called Jar Jar and him not wanting to end up like Jar Jar. Uh, (laughs) I absolutely believe that was a reference, Jamie, uh, to the Spaced episode, because it is uh, one of those ones that has been seen many times in memes and on uh, on just video clips yeah. of that episode of Space his rant about Star Wars and why it's ruined his childhood um, or at least the character in the in the show. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Jamie. Um, Dr. Bob Phillips says Tobramycin and Topa Takan, someone's been hanging about the oncology department a bit too much. Mm. Best boys moment, Frenchie's crisis of faith, feeling it too deeply to ignore is just in keeping with everything we know of him. Mm -hmm. Best seven moments, the consequences of not keeping your beads where they're meant to be. Best other bit, the outro music of Old MacDonald's Farm. (laughs) Yeah, that was pretty cool, actually, the Old MacDonald. Had a farm sort of souped up version of it. Full of veed up animals, yeah. Yeah, indeed, yeah. (laughs) Thanks, Dr. Bob. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Bob. Joe Herbers says, I think this was the weakest episode that I remember in the series. It was good to see Mr. Edgar again, but also including Newman on their walk and talks around the farm was just too much. One thing I didn't understand is why Newman wasn't out there popping the heads of the super animals. They established she's invulnerable at the start of the season. She popped one of the chickens, so why is she hiding in the barn with the rest of them and then giving up the last of the drug in a risky plan? They gave a reason why Annie couldn't take on the animals, but unless I missed something, Newman should have been good to go. I couldn't tell if it was weak writing or if there's something more going on with Huey's mom because it was odd that she claimed the V fell out of Huey's pocket, which we didn't see, so she just injected it. 
Either she should have said more about thinking he couldn't do it on his own, or she's not completely what she seems, which is possible, but would be a bit much. Also, I know The Boys is all about graphic violence, but Huey's dad killing several innocent people undercut them having to say goodbye to him. Thanks for your thoughts on the episode, Joe. Um, Different opinion there from Joe um, to mine, and I guess some of the other uh, of our listeners who've sent in their thoughts uh, on the episode. Um, why didn't Newman pop the heads of, of all the animals around? Uh, not really too sure. Um, well, she's a good catch, in all yeah. fairness, to be honest, because you're right. She could have popped um, the heads, and she she did do the chicken. Mm-hmm. Maybe a lamb head is a bit too <laughs> difficult for her. I don't know, but it is. I mean, you're, you're right. The, there is at least two people there with superpowers in Cam- Kamiko and... Um, and Newman, mm-hmm. so they could have done something, and even dare I say, it, Billy Butcher, um, because he has uh, the V inside him as well. So, yeah. um, I don't know, not a clue as to that. I think, um, yeah, I think we didn't follow her, and I'm, I'm not sure if she's completely on the side of the rest of the boys. She doesn't really feel like she's there for the team up. She's there to get herself out of there, and then we see her using her head popping abilities to get Stan Edgar free. Yeah, and I I think that was it. I think she was sort of dealing with Stan Edgar, Mm. I mean, Huey as well, and then also there was Amir, um, who at the end she was looking for as well. So, you know, maybe she was just coming at it from the politician kind of perspective, I guess. And just leaving the boys to that and trying to escape herself uh, was kind of her, what she wanted to do. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, the other interesting thing is to what extent Amir would know about her head-popping ability. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we don't know that yet. I uh, don't know whether he knows much about that uh, himself, but again, yeah. So I'd say generally the character in and of herself is cautious about using um, her ability openly. Yeah. So that might be why she didn't. That might be it, but you do make another great point, Joe, about, uh, about Huey's mom. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I know we talked about it. I can't remember yeah. whether we actually talked about it in the podcast or not because we were just a little bit con- confused about her comment that she said, oh, I had the V, um, you fell out of your pocket and I just used it. You know, in the two seconds that you even got out of the room, she just went ahead and used it. And um, it's like as if they had a conversation in a separate episode where Huey had said, I'm going to be coming with the V and then didn't use it. And then she decided to use it because even now in episode six, there doesn't seem to be much about her that seems bad other than we don't trust any new character that joins the show <laughs> so yeah no exactly yeah. i mean it, it's one of those things where you know should we have seen this or is it okay that it just happened off screen and we yeah. have it told by huey's mum which the issue is it's creating that doubt because we're not entirely sure we trust her yet and yeah. um, she's not had long enough i mean i know with this episode it seems like she's burying her previous husband Mm -hmm. you know or spreading his ashes i should say with the rest of them um and you know or maybe she just went into his pocket but just said oh it fell out your pocket but she knew it was there um so yeah it's interesting i know what you mean you do wonder is there going to be some kind of surprise or reveal later on yeah that is going to sort of sort of feel as though it comes out of left field a bit now that you know episode six and it doesn't seem like she's taken a nasty turn with hugh senior out the way yeah and i think we in episode five the one thing that changed my perspective on whether she's somebody bad or not was just everything she had said to huey while hugh senior was in the was in the coma was confirmed when hugh senior came out of the coma so she wasn't making any of that up so um but we'll we'll talk about it later on as we discuss episode six, um, I think there's something else I want to talk about there, if that's all right. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and finally, just uh, Hugh Senior killing uh, lots of innocent people. There is just a, a, a line that's said before the guy he appears in the middle of um, and kills him in the bed, um, where he's coming on to the nurse and he's saying, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. You should just go out to dinner with me sometime. And I think that's trying to reference that he was coming on to the nurse and she was having none of it and he was trying to tell her that he's a good guy. Um, and then he gets killed by Hugh Senior. I don't know whether that makes it any better or worse. but It probably um. doesn't. I mean, the only thing I'd say is, I think, yes, it is about graphic violence, uh, mm. the boys in part, but I think in in respect to Hugh Senior, in he didn't actually quite know how to control it. He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't able to control it at all. He wasn't able to focus on it because it's something that he's not had literally five minutes ago. And I think as well, 
you know, there is that suggestion that um, he was becoming more forgetful. So, yeah. you know, he was, it was almost his panic reflex. So I, I don't think it was such, it was more trying to illustrate when someone is confused and afraid. In and a sense. absolutely. And they had to give a reason for him to be put down as well. It can't be that he kills loads of bad guys and then he goes, oh, you're out of control with your powers and then kills them. It has to yeah. be he's killed a lot of innocents and doesn't know what he's doing. Exactly. So Hugh has to, Hugh Jr. has to take him out. Yeah. But good stuff, Joe. Uh, thanks for the feedback. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Finally, David Mr. Writer has sent in a message on Facebook as well. Yeah. David Mr. Writer says, Boyce has entered a weird territory, and I love it. I don't know how to describe the weirdness, but I do. Ryan, I thought Butcher told you not to be a see you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. That was a quick turn, and Homelander, you little deviant. Side note, this was probably the only episode where Homelander was normal. I guess we know what Butcher has in his brain. That's Mm -hmm. the end of Tucker Carlson Temu edition. (laughs) Eric really gave Simon Pegg an out with a bang. He really let him stretch his wings, got to play a soup, and then chose range with his acting chops with the crying and anger. Mm -hmm. I loved it. This season is somehow going to be a classic. Side note, can we talk about how big of a flex it is that Victoria Newman announces her arrival by making your nose bleed? Mm. It's such a subtle yet powerful statement that lets you know your life is in her hands. Yeah. Excellent stuff, David, Mr. Writer. Yeah, no, it is a great statement from mm-hmm. Victoria Newman. And she's a great character. She I is. think, like, even in this episode, episode six, sort of, you know, being in a room filled with all the mansplaining that was happening, a lot of the mm. the soups that she just doesn't like anyway, the other politicians that she's not really um, a fan of, and yet turns it round for Homelander. Absolutely. Really yeah, interesting yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, I love your description of uh, Tucker Carlson Temu edition as um, Cameron Cole, because uh, <laughs> that's exactly what he is. He is the uh, the cheap version, but almost exactly the same as uh, as a, that particular journalist uh, in the US. Great stuff, David, Mr. Ryder. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, David, Mr. Ryder, and everyone for your feedback. Really good to get your thoughts in. Yes, and if you want to send in any feedback to us, you can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. Let's get into our discussion about the sixth episode of The Boys. And a reminder before we do, we will have our sixth question in our Boys Season 4 pub quiz coming later on in the episode as well. Absolutely. Let us get into The Boys Season 4, Episode 6, Dirty Business. Derek, what are some of the episode details? Well, of course, showrunner for the show is Eric Kripke. The series is based on the comic book series from Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. The executive producers of the show are Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. This episode was written by Anselm Richardson. He wrote Season 2, Episode 6, and Season 3, Episode 3 as well. So the third episode that Good Anselm stuff. has done. So, yeah, he's kind of peppered throughout the seasons. Exactly. And uh, the episode was directed by Karen Gaviola. She also directed Episode 2 of this season as well. Good stuff. Yeah. John, do you want to give us the synopsis for The Boys Season 4, Episode 6, Dirty Business? Sure. Homelander, Sister Sage, and Victoria Newman head to Tech Knights Manor for a party of government and corporate power players to gather support for their plan to oust President Singer. But when the boys send Huey in disguise into the party to gather intel, he finds himself getting more than he bargained for in Tech Knights' secret underground tech cave. Meanwhile, Billy Butcher, who's missing in action, and Joe Kessler continue their desperate quest for the virus. Kimiko struggles without Frenchie. Mother's milk stress boils over into a full-blown anxiety attack, which allows A-Train to finally feel what it's like to be a real hero. Excellent stuff. Yeah, lots going on in this episode, uh, but it feels like it's all centred in Tech Knights and Tech Knights Party. Primarily, yes, yes. because yes. that is where the, the shock and horror of it is. And I mean, it's the main basis for this episode, mm-hmm. is that there's a huge you know, subversive, treacherous plan coming to the fore here, Mm -hmm. hosted by Tech Knight, but ultimately it is Sister Sage and Homelander that are driving this with, I don't really 
understand fully how much Victoria Newman knew about it, mm. but... And I don't think she did. I think it was just simply when the 1% of the 1% were going to have the meeting that she probably would find out. Um, Because I think she just kind of embellishes and backs Homelander's Mm. feeble attempt because he was going to leave it to Sister Sage. So, Well, let's get into it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, let's let's start with our antagonist moments so we can talk about all of those points as well because there's there's things that... um, Newman knew before going to that party without a doubt because she's had those meetings before but there's some things uh, she definitely didn't know about Uh, so we'll start with our antagonist moment for the episode you're not the real heroes I'm the real hero and is Homeland the real hero of this episode John where do you want to start with our antagonist moments for this episode Um, it's mainly about well where's Tech Knight Mm. and for that matter where is Ashley oh yes and Yes, they're in the tech cave. (laughs) Uh, I think this is just probably one of the finest uh, BDSM (laughs) moments um, or masochist uh, moments Mm -hmm. uh, on TV. Um, Equally, you know, enough to shy away from it um, like any good horror movie. Mm. Um, But I think it's just the fact that It's connected with Huey Mm -hmm. being the in disguise as Web Weaver because Web Weaver's been invited to the party. Yeah. He's there to grab intel. He's put all his bugs around, but ultimately um, he's been invited for this tour of Tech Knight's home. And it is just that moment where Homelander says, and where's Tech Knight gone? Uh-huh. And it kind of comes down into um, his tech cave and you just have this BDSM. You have, you know, Elijah, his butler, hosing down the floor oh, from previous. Gosh, yeah. uh, there's the um, last sidekick uh, or, you know, the red gimp in the PVC suit mm-hmm. uh, that's chained to the floor. And all of this because you just know how Huey is reacting the fact that he loses the comm signal mm-hmm. with Mother's Milk and Starlight and Kamiko which ultimately does have them then set on a quest to um to save him but it is just this <laughs> depraved tech knight yeah. with Ashley arriving to join in. Um, you know, he's also asphyxiating himself as Huey puts his buttocks on the oh. German chocolate cake, um, <laughs> which is just, he says, now fart. <laughs> and you have this kind of order from Tech Knight as <laughs> Huey kind of looks at him from... I'm fine. I'm you okay. Know, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't need to. It Uh, is, you know, Tech Knight's like, we're just getting started, you know, as (laughs) Elijah the butler passes him sandpaper. (laughs) And I'm just like, what is going on Uh, here? Uh, But this was hilarious. And I think it's also just the fact that part of it is some of the funniest moments are with Ashley tickling Huey's feet and just talking dirty to him, but it's Hugh just laughing (laughs) and laughing because his feet are getting tickled. (laughs) And he can't stop himself. He can't Uh, stop. Especially when when Tech Knight tells Ashley that don't worry, you can do whatever you need to uh, with Web Weaver. He'll use his safe word if he really wants to get out of it. And then it just consists of Huey for the rest of the scene trying to just say words <laughs> that he thinks Web Weaver might use and, and even says, oh, I like to just shout out things when I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> it's just absolutely hilarious and depraved all at the same time because they set it up right from the start of this episode. You knew exactly where what you were getting from the episode when MM goes to visit <laughs> Web Weaver yeah. to knock him out using two days worth of Rehypnol um, to take his stuff and Web Weaver tells him that he's going to have to be, administer the Rehypnol to him uh, in the other hole, not his web hole. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah. And also, you know, we, you have Kimiko wants Huey's in that suit you look like a Times Square Elmo. Um, <laughs> or, you know, you have Starlight and Huey, he's going, well, he wears it tight and it smells of ass and broken dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, this is not great. Yeah. But it does disguise, 
has sent Huey's sent. It does, it does. From Homelander and Tech Knight. It's very efficient the way they explained yeah. who Tech Knight is because we saw a whole episode of him in uh, in season one of Gen V where we learned that his abilities mean that he anybody that's put in the room with him, he'll be able to find out the truth that they're trying to keep from him. So uh, so how efficient that they go, okay, well, the sweat of a uh, web weaver in the suit will block that ability that he has. That's quite, that's quite good. Um, but I do love it. I, I noticed it on the second <laughs> viewing um, that Huey actually is trying to accomplish his goal really quickly. So his goal is to get in, plant the bugs, and get uh, Tech Knight out of the house yeah. <laughs> to the waiting members of the team, MM and uh, and Starlight and uh, Kamiko. So he says to him, the minute he meets Tech Knight, he goes, do you guys have stables? <laughs> Which is where he wants to be taken to because he's planted one bug, literally one bug in the house and wants to get out of there. Uh, and Tech Knight goes, no, no, the tour starts inside the house. And yes, the uh, the absolute depravity ensues from that point onwards. Well, I have to say for a, a PG podcast, I can't really say too much about what Ashley um, actually said no. in the show. But it was hilarious. <laughs> and I don't quite know what uh, moist liquid she rubs on his face. Oh, you left. do. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah you be, certainly do. It could be one or the other because it did leave Huey with his finest line. <laughs> <laughs> If you tap my undies, I'll shatter like peanut brittle. <laughs> <laughs> because there have been so much fluids that are uh, crusted on them. As he's playing the role of uh, of Web Weaver, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just I just think this is great. And how far they go with Tech Knight here. He is able to do anything in this scene to Huey. Um all because he's arranged to meet up with this guy Webweaver who seems totally depraved. You know, again, we've met him on screen once before and we see him here when he's meeting up with MM and he'll literally do anything for the hypno. Yeah. He'll do anything for the drugs that he's going to get. So it seems like even in his normal uh, depraved personal life, he's willing to do anything for <laughs> for another soup. So um, that leaves Huey in such an awkward situation. It kind of, it, it, It's something that has been set up since the beginning with Huey. Huey doesn't really belong in the boys. He's there because he's been so badly wronged by soup characters since the start. But getting him into undercover situations is just a really, really bad idea. It always goes badly well, for Huey. Well, that's it. And and we have Tech Knight finding Huey out because he doesn't know Web Weaver's safe word. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the fact that later on, Elijah... Um, says, and his safe word was Zendaya, <laughs> which is a really good reference. Yes, because um, Zendaya, of course, played MJ in the uh, in the Spider Man movie. Uh, so, of course, uh, that's why Web Weaver would be in love with Zendaya. Yeah, but it it, go, it it starts to begin to get really dark for Huey because mm. he's like, because uh, Tech Knight just comes out with this monologue, which is really dark. It's like, well, everyone's holes are all just always in the same place. Mm -hmm. It's so boring. I like it if. I make my own and then F them. And it's like, yeah. oh, Jesus. Okay, uh -huh. here we scream. And I was just there in the back of my mind. I was just going, well, thank goodness. Mother's Milk, Starlight, and Kamiko are going to rescue Huey. And mm -hmm. then we know this because otherwise it starts to like feel really isolated absolutely because it's the it's the worst position he could ever be in he's totally trussed up and he thought he might be able to get out of there without tech Knight finding out who it was but once the mask is off and he's still trussed up you're going this is not looking good uh for poor wee he yeah ashley's also gone at this point because mm -hmm. she's all finished up and as tech Knight says you need to replenish your fluids <laughs> yes. um and he has a surprise for her, I think. In no, that was what she was wearing. Her, like, her PVC yeah. sort of outfit. Yes, yeah. exactly. Different to the usual surprises he leaves for her in the dressing room. As well. Yeah, exactly. he's totally <laughs> depraved. You know, the, we true. we saw this character in season one of Gen V. You know, they they put out a little uh, brief synopsis of who he is on the boys' Twitter account the other day, where, where they said all you need to know is he had a TV show called The Whole Truth. And he will have sex with any hole in the world. That's it. That's his entire character. Yeah. Uh, and he's very intelligent, of course. Uh, but they definitely lead into uh, the the Batman um, character much more. Of course, we have the tech cave here instead of the back cave. Um, but same kind of thing where he pulls the book, the book out, the, the uh, lift comes up and brings people down to uh, down to his tech cave. 
But I don't know, there's just even some other things that he says where he's, you know, he's saying to him, this is the position of sidekick for Tech Knight that uh, Web Weaver is basically auditioning for by coming along to this sex party yeah. uh, in the dungeon and saying to him, don't worry, you know, there's, it's not just me. This is Robin. Yeah, basically, or yeah. Nightwing. Yeah, but he's basically saying um, that, we know you're really depraved, Web Weaver, but don't worry, it's not just me. Myself and Ashley are just the starters. Uh, once the party's over, everybody's coming down to have a go, basically. It's like it's really bad yeah. what they're proposing here for this guy. And having his former sidekick, again, trussed up in the corner in the red gimp outfit, you're going, it's a bit what like did Squid he Game do? Type well, thing. yeah, it's bad. But yeah. again, I'd say the biggest reference, of course, is a new version of Pulp Fiction, because you remember um, the scene in Pulp Fiction that uh, that lives in everybody's uh, everybody's head who saw that movie going, oh God, please don't say my life ever gets that bad. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so um, <laughs> let's move on to another major moment from the episode. Uh, I'm going to take the what's happening upstairs effectively with the politicians and with, uh, with Homelander. So enacting the 25th Amendment with Sage, Homelander and Victoria Newman uh, upstairs. So... Um, Newman's been invited along and doesn't really realize that this is the moment where they're going to reveal their big plan. I I really quickly looked it up, but there is absolutely a 25th Amendment uh, of the American Constitution, which allows um, a party to claim that the president is no longer capable of their duties and the duties passed to the vice president, effectively. So that's what they're saying really early on. That's what Homelander is saying they're going to, uh, going to do once Robert Singer gets into office. And in trying to find Huey... They bump into Sage, uh, the, the, the boys' team bump into her, and um, M.M. takes a shot, um, shoots her in the head, effectively. Uh, well, that's it. She She's kind of almost winding him up. She um, is, absolutely. With uh, knowledge about his kid, um, and yeah. it just gets out of hand. I mean, I love how it cut to the hand, where it's like almost an imaginary stress ball mm. that he's trying to squeeze. Yeah, yeah. Um, but ultimately takes that shot yeah. uh, and gets uh, Sister Sage uh, through the head, which if it was anyone else, they would have died. But we yeah. know that Sister Sage does her own homemade lobotomies in order to go stupid yeah. uh, for a while. And again, very smart of the showrunners to show us that in the kind of comedy moments that we've seen. I know yeah. it wasn't comedy to look at, but I mean, you know, her dumbing herself down so she could have yeah. sex with the, with the deep, you know, that kind of stuff. Or, you know, that's the consequence of, of someone else having to do the lobotomy. But here we see her being lobotomized by a bullet to the brain. But, I mean, she still is able to live, but she's completely out of this whole conversation now about the 25th Amendment. <laughs> it is oh. hilarious where she's just got all the cake around her face after that. And it's the, the knowing glance from Victoria Newman back to her. She, and she nods. Newman nods back. And then she kind of nods <laughs> twice. And Newman nod, and then she just is nodding her head. And yeah. Newman's like, and just turns away. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but, but, I, but I also have to question whether that's the same cake that Huey was sitting and farting on uh, downstairs <laughs> that, you know, that Elijah had cleaned it up maybe and brought it back upstairs to maybe. serve the politicians. Or I, cut it up and portioned it out. Yeah, but uh, you do see her touching the actual cake, but I wonder whether it's just a second cake or whether, as I say, Elijah and um, and maybe the, the soups have that problem with politicians and that, any human, really. So maybe this is just the maybe, way of serving yeah. it back up to them. I don't know. Um, but I like the whole thing between Sage and, and Victoria Newman as well. Like, you just had Newman mansplained about abortion oh, from the Speaker of the House. Yeah. And you have... Effectively, in a very small moment, you know, her and Sister Sage kind of coming to this c conclusion as Sister Sage mm -hmm. talks about her own experiences where she came up with a cure for um, the cancer that her grandmother had, mm -hmm. um, but was totally dismissed and sort of put down by men. Yeah. Um, and you know, as, as she says, she says, you know, the only way that people or women like us can get there and get at this table is one hand in their pockets mm -hmm. as the other slits their throat. Absolutely. And that's the nod afterwards, even though at that stage, Sage, um, you know, is in no fit state uh, to, to do anything. But I did like just how she was totally useless 
was right at the start of this episode. It was, and Sage is going to explain everything. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Homelander really didn't sell it. He doesn't win over the politicians and the um, business leaders in in that room. And I think that's a really important thing. Homelander's trying to use the same type of rhetoric and the same type of misinformation that Firecracker's been using and that Vault News Network has been using on his fans and the supporters of Vault. But no, you have the people in this room, they say 34% of the entire GDP of the country is amongst the 1% of the 1% that's in the room here with them. And instantly they're going, don't give us that BS. It's absolute crap. What's going to happen if you take out the president of the United States of America and Victoria Newman becomes the president. What's going to happen with all the other things that are connected, all the controls that are in place to stop us being actually in charge? Like the Supreme Court. Ooh. That we already get that in control. Yeah, exactly. Like it has happened in well, the US Well, they say the Department already. of yeah. Justice, yeah. you know, the military, mm-hmm. you know, what about them? Yeah. You know, as the 1%, we've got to deal with them, not with, like, local police enforcement absolutely absolutely and it's nothing to do with the again the misinformation that firecracker is out is out there um telling the general population they want to know real answers here and homelander had none of them homelander was hoping that sage would show off her real plan here and newman steps up uh newman steps up effectively saying she's totally on the side of homelander she knows that robert singer is the the biggest threat to the country, as uh, as uh, Homelander has said, and she has plans for all of the other uh, elements. Um, so by her stepping up and standing side by side with Homelander, yeah. suddenly all these billionaires who are also being told, you made yourself billionaires, you don't need to be overseen by anybody else, you're smarter than that. <laughs> so playing up to all of their egos as well. So uh, I am pretty certain this is a similar conversation that's been had in uh, in boardrooms uh, in many different countries around the world mm. yeah but that's kind of the big reveal of the plan there was a question that um, we got in on one of our pieces of feedback as to whether uh, the coffee and vodka sent it in two weeks ago um whether this is going to be homelander the president which is a comic book storyline but it may not be but if newman is going to become the president when robert singer goes then it's the puppeteer Homelander behind the scenes with Newman as president, uh, and that sets this sets that stall right out. In this, and episode. I mean, yeah. I think, and we'll come to it later in terms of when Tech Knight's being tortured. But there's more information that comes out from Tech Knight around this plan as well. This is kind of the sale of the plan to mm-hmm. the one percent of the one percent. But Absolutely. there is more to it as well. There is, and and, and as you mentioned earlier on, what did Victoria Newman going no going into this meeting here and she knew about this plan she knew the plan was to take out Robert Singer um he even knew that Robert Singer even knew that he knew that um he is just one head pop away from um from office right yeah. he says Victoria Newman's one head pop away from being president effectively and that head's mine um so that, that they do know this plan Victoria Newman knows this plan she doesn't know the tech night piece um so far that seems to be completely separate from uh, from what she's aware of so uh, what will her reaction be when she finds out yeah exactly but overall love this love the kind of reveal of how dark it's getting the last episode we saw effectively the soups in vault the seven becoming gods um you know becoming that version of evil well, gods yeah. um it's, yeah. it's that re- removing any kind of thought of responsibility to lowly mortals mm-hmm. I and mean, you see you know Percy jackson and the lightning thief is this omnipotence of gods and whether they mm. care for the mortals that reside yes, absolutely. Uh, amongst them or whether it's you know thor Love and Thunder, where you have the idea of gods and uh-huh. and the retribution from Christian Bale's character, which I can't mm. remember off the top of my head, of course. You know, it's that yeah. kind of yeah. element to it. Absolutely, absolutely. And here we have, as I say last week, the seven becoming gods. And here, again, you're kind of going, yeah, they need to get the 1% outside so that they can enact their plan. But none of these people is going to survive either. So, yeah. But yeah. one of the little asides from this is that whilst they're all becoming gods, it's a, there's a nice touch here um, with Sage's headshot, uh, Mother's Milk effectively looks like he's having a heart attack. Mm. And Kamiko gets uh, a train in order to get him to hospital as quickly as possible. And whilst mm-hmm. the others are thinking about being gods and and omnipotent, and actually you hear 
um, the deep and the the new black noir I'm talking about how violence is power mm-hmm. how the old black noir used to you know sort of really love his violence mm-hmm. um, if he was doing a lot of it yeah, yeah. but here we have a train actually starting to realize about becoming an actual hero yes. saving lives and making love this moment and yeah. um, other people sort of look up to him as a role model mm-hmm. as you see the the kid outside the hospital seeing him bring mother's milk to the A and E. Um so I thought that was a nice little touch as I, well. I really liked it because we we had heard earlier on in the season that effectively none of A Train's saves have been things that he did himself. They've yeah, all exactly. been set up by Voth. So he's never had this moment where a real human has looked up to him saying, thank you, that's a super heroic thing to do. So I uh, th- thought having that wordless moment with A-Train as well worked really well. There was no moment of, oh my God, it's A-Train, aren't you a wonderful hero? Hero is just the look between the two of them um, after he brings MM in. And just to say, yeah, it, so MM didn't have a heart attack. They confirmed that it, that it was a panic attack, which yeah. uh, can manifest like a heart attack uh, as well, which is scary as hell for MM, yeah. isn't it? That Absolutely. He's, that he's just gone through that again, one of the strongest members of the team, and, and there he is uh, falling down in the middle of the job, basically. Yeah, absolutely. But let us move on to our boys or protagonist moments from this episode of The Boys. Mm-hmm. Oi, oi. Yeah, I'll kick off my uh, boys moment uh, for this episode. It's kind of an odd one because I suppose, as I say, everything was seemingly happening in Tech Knight's place and it seemed to be quite a dark episode, the seven kind of leading a lot of it. But my big boys moment from the episode is what happens at the end, the the um, torturing of Tech Knight and the reveal of what the other uh, piece of information uh, that's coming out, what, what the other part of the plan of Homelander. Um, so first off, Love that they try torture Tech Knight and they have um, Kamiko doing her usual uh, version yeah. of attacking and, and stabbing and that kind of stuff. And that, the only response that gets from Tech Knight is, oh, yeah, mommy hit me harder, basically. Yeah, you know? grab so, me by the balls. Yeah, exactly. So he really wants to be beaten and hit. So um, you hear Huey kind of going, what do you do with it? Masochist, if he, if he likes pain, how the hell do you torture him? And um, finally, uh, his former sidekick... I think he's called Ladio from the credits. Um, he breaks out and shows you how you take down this tech billionaire, <laughs> as I'll call him. Um, you spread all of his billions out amongst causes that he doesn't believe in at all. There's an awful moment earlier on in the episode when tech is talking about A-Train in front of A-Train, where he's saying to him, I have 11 generations worth of wealth. He's talking to Firecracker about him. I have 11 generations from of wealth that's not coming from entertainment. It, they started out as slavers. H.M. would have caused my great-great-granddaddy some major problems. When the but bo- he still would have caught him. But he still would have caught him, is what he says. Yeah, but here, when the boys are torturing him, when uh, when Huey and uh, and Kamiko and, uh, and Annie are torturing him, they start sending money to the exact causes that go against everything the tech knight believes in it's like you know or his family believed in. yeah the the family that have made the real money i mean tech knights they're going that this is real money this isn't just you know entertainment money yeah they were slave catchers back in the day and they've moved to owning pretty much all of the correctional facilities exactly um you know as he says he goes we catch them we house them we rehabilitate them and then we catch them all over again and it is that kind of um, you know, I think there was a documentary there recently yeah. around the correctional uh, facilities and institutions and even just, I guess, lower courts in counties or in states mm-hmm. and how that puts a disproportionate number of uh, black people into prison yeah. and these correctional facilities effectively like a spin cycle and um, without any real trial with yeah. uh, with more plea deals than should be allowed in any type of well, yeah, uh, legal deal, system okay. a plea deal where you stick someone in prison basically for the rest of their life on a cycle um yes it is a modern form of slavery and here we have tech Knight representing that so i love that the charities or the places that uh, Annie and, and Huey and Kamiko choose to send the money to are the Innocence Project, which fights exactly for the rights of those types of people yep. who are 65 million to in the there. Innocence Network. Exactly. There's um, 100 million to Black Lives Matter as well, and 40 million to uh, Elizabeth Warren, uh, which again, <laughs> uh, just choosing all of these people. And 
as Tech Knight screams for the first time in pain at the loss of all of the money that he's getting, he finally gives up uh, what is the real deal. What's the final element of the plan that Homelander has, which is that they're going to use their prisons as internment camps uh, to yeah, put any that's... of the dissidents that are against Homelander's uh, beliefs and, and plan uh, into the, his prisons. Yeah. yeah, And I love it that it's actually his butler, Elijah, that ends up just coming and strangling him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, he's had enough. I've cleaned up too many fluids from too many holes. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we see him, we've seen him at the start of this, yeah, yeah. spraying it down. Um, and, you know, it says, we'll make it look like an accident. We always admired David Carradine. Again, another great reference from Elijah the Butler. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, so I mean, ultimately, Tech Knight is killed by the Butler. Yes. The butler in the it. tech cave <laughs> with the rope or yes. with the whip. Um, yes. So I kind of really did think this was really good. I, I, I thought Elijah was just perfect. It was like he'd snapped. Yes, I think Elijah's reaction at the end of the episode, absolutely, he's uh, he's snapped and, and done the right thing at the end of the episode. But all I could think of throughout the episode was how many sidekicks has Tech Knight gone through facilitated by Elisha over these many, many well, years the as well. One. But at least he did. At least he, he broke him. And yeah, the reference to David Carradine who uh, who died of, of auto asphyxiation as well. Um, I was expecting because there was loads of 80s music being played um, by Tech Knight yeah. in the, in the uh, Tech Cave. I was expecting some In Excess being played uh, around that time as well because uh, that's how we lost uh, Michael Hutchins that too. Um, but they didn't go for that. I think they, the 80s music that's in there is actually more of a reference to the fact that um, Huey is uh, a massive fan of 80s music, as we know, throughout the series. And as we learned two weeks ago, um, Huey's favourite soup has always been Tech Knight. That's the doll that he wanted when he was eight years old. So uh, to have happened to Huey, what happened to Huey at the hands of Tech Knight has, has a double awfulness about it. Yeah. Yeah. But that moment is fantastic as they get to the heart of things and uh, and finally find out what's happened what's happening with tech night and that's another soup down yeah absolutely yeah um i think moving on to my point uh, mm-hmm. for the protagonist moment it's just quite a small point but it is made in manhattan <laughs> it is the fact that we get <laughs> hugh senior's ashes oh. spread in front of the feature hotel where we had Jennifer Lopez and Ray Fiennes uh, exiting from there. And it's an awful movie that no one likes, apart from Hugh Senior. Fur Jews. Yeah. Again, many public health violations happening as they're literally just spreading the ashes on the steps into the hotel. Uh-huh. Um, and I kind of... I kind of like that, and I mean, it's well. I like I like it how Hugh and his mom bond over the fact that yeah, both exactly. of them know it's a terrible, terrible movie, but he liked it, so they're going to do something special for him to spread his ashes. And it is to that point as to whether Hugh's mom is also possibly bad. You just don't know because this seems like a really nice moment between the two of them. Yes, but there is a weird moment about it, right? So this is what I wanted to talk about um, when we talked about her uh, earlier on in the episode. There's a weird moment. She says she's leaving the city, but she'll be on call to to Huey whenever he needs her. She can come back to the city kind of thing. There's no particular reason why she would be leaving. She's reunited with her son finally after all these years. He's just lost his dad. And he jokes that, you know, all the people in, in the local town where she's from or where she's living uh, just can't do without their cosmetics for a little while longer. But that is really unusual. She's a cosmetic salesperson. Yeah, so I know she sells Vault Cosmetics. That was brought up uh, earlier on in the season. She knew what to do with the V. She knew to give it to Hugh's dad. That's still a little dodgy. She did it when Hugh decided not to do no, it. that's true. All still, all little bit dodgy, but not enough to say she's a bad character. Exactly. Yeah, but it's just that moment where you're going, yeah, in two episodes, though, when we look back and find out that she is a soup. But if and, you sell cosmetics, yeah. you've also got to get money. So, you know, you still need to make money. Agreed. She none might of it, be on her own time, yeah, you know. So absolutely, none of it pointing to her being a bad person, but all of it that could be wrapped into the end it of the season when, exactly. when we find out she is a bad. It's person. not that yeah. it's saying it's a bad person, yes. but it could ultimately reveal itself to be a moment where she's going back to do something else yeah. or whatever. We don't know. As I said, I hope yeah. not. I hope this is just a replacement parent um, yeah. figure for Huey uh, I, for the last season. 
And I, I think I think the other side of this is that you know it does bookend here. I think the fact that the end of the the last episode, Huey effectively, you know, euthanized his his yeah. dad. Yeah. Um, and I I think it's really good because Huey went through a lot in this episode, mm-hmm. literally. Um, and I do kind of like the fact that you know with all of this with the boys, yes, they do hugely controversial scenes and mm-hmm. so on, but it comes down to the fact that Huey's lost his dad and him making it clear to Starlight that he is not fine and the reason for that is that he misses his dad. And I thought that was really, really poignant um, despite everything um, that he's been through. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we did have Starlight at the start saying, well, are you okay to Absolutely. do this? And yeah. it's kind of like, yes, you know, you're trying to be one of the boys, I can do this. Yeah. So I kind of like those sort of real low-key personal human touches that Huey brings here. Without Even it, if it is just, yeah. whether it's this emotional point or it's his ticklish feet, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, they're, they're kind of human and exactly. in a world of soups he is the human touch point you know he is the main human character uh that the audience has that point of view on yeah yeah absolutely and i, I i've even noticed the second time i was watching it that when tech knight introduces him to elijah his butler and everything that he's done for him he says to him um this is before anything really bad happens to Huey. He says to him, we all need our father figures in our life. And Huey's reaction to it, you can tell he's suddenly thinking about the fact that he just had to uh, put down his father um, yeah. the previous the previous day or a couple of days beforehand, effectively. So, um, so yeah, it's, a, it's a, a really sad moment, as you say, bringing that human side of things to the boys as, as yeah. Huey often does, Absolutely. as Seth Great often does. Is that it for your boys moment for the episode, yes. John? Yes, yeah, that's it. Right, let's get on to our final moments, our other moments from the episode. You have five minutes to make your opening statement. Do you know, I found out that our final processing program is so good for our podcast that it takes out the explosion that's in the middle of that, which is the whole point of (laughs) of that quote. So I'm going to try and fix that. So hopefully our fellow boys and girls will hear the explosive in the middle of that this time rather than just the words and people screaming. (laughs) So I will do my best to fix that. (laughs) John, what's your other moment for the episode? It's Firecracker only has a long-term tablet regime for Homelander. Mm -hmm. Um, Despite everything that had gone on in this episode, there was still this moment that not only kind of gave the the scary commitment that Firecracker has Mm -hmm. to Homelander. You know, he has given her everything and is everything... uh, to her yep and to the point that she is so loyal she has been on a long regimen of tablets in order to have breast milk without pregnancy Mm, only makes her heart slightly bigger john and only makes her heart slightly bigger uh i guess for homelander Mm -hmm. um and (laughs) as she sort of uncontrollably squirts uh-huh. some out that flicks out as she's opening her top into um onto homelander's face mm. and i do love the fact that anthony star does kind of just lick a bit from uh his top lip and again it's just one of those moments where actually maybe the hub of it of her scary commitment to him is lost or the fact that Firecracker makes Homelander realize that Coleman wasn't the leak and has effectively Mm -hmm. persuaded him that she's not the leak as she leaks um, (laughs) over his face. Yeah, basically. um, This is about Firecracker taking back control. Um, It really is. Her explanation to him. Uh, what would you do for a million podcast listeners, John? Her explanation to him that she only had a couple of hundred listeners before he was involved and everybody just laughed at her ideas and now he's involved and now she's running a full channel on VNN now that Coleman's gone. Um, if you if you think about her treatment by him at the party in Tech Knight's house where, you know, he didn't even look at her. He treats her like nothing. And then Sage gets involved and is like, just go over there and, drink some vodka basically from behind the bar that's all you're good for the, the adults are talking over here and the next time we see firecracker she's back at Voss, having 
committed herself to something that will possibly make her heart explode um, because she's uh, feeding herself drugs to do the only thing that she can do to get into Homelander's inner circle and convince him other people are trying to go against him but she never will because what she's what he she's been given by him is something that she never would have yeah. gotten by anybody else but she does yeah. give him intel around starlight yep. says you know how would she know mm-hmm. given it was after coleman's death exactly yeah so the platform like you say the platform that she's been given she's so grateful the loyalty is there mm-hmm. even if she hadn't been brought in her hundred listeners on the podcast, well, yeah. it was for that reason, you know? Yeah. It's not necessarily to be given what she's been given, but she's got that now. So she's yeah. more uh, appreciative. But um, she, she says that committed. people used to laugh at her ideas were laughed at when she had a podcast of only a hundred people. But now with the backing of Homelander, she's now running a show on the biggest network in, in America, effectively the Vault News Network, and people are believing everything yeah. she said. So she is willing to give him everything but i love that it came back to her repeating her exact phrase that she said to him when she walked into vault towers originally she said to him i'll do anything i'll do absolutely anything and here she is without being asked by homelander here she is having put herself through this regimen of drugs to be able to deliver the thing that homelander wants milk without pregnancy effectively yeah, exactly. so um so She's getting herself in the room where it happens, basically. Yeah. And this is her way to do it. Um, and that's a scary thing, having Firecracker willing to do anything and now on the side of Homelander. Um, will it be bad or good for Homelander? Um, you know, there's interesting questions here. We've got Sage, uh, of course, having, you know, be, being put to the side because of MM, MM's bullet into her head. So um, she was put on the sidelines there. So if he had her by his side, had Sage by his side, he could have taken over the entire country. Firecracker doesn't get on with Sage at all and has now aligned herself right beside uh, Home- Homelander. So we talked earlier on in the season about whether Sage would turn on Homelander, whether she has yeah. an alternate plan here. Maybe it's not an alternate plan. Maybe it's Firecracker pushing Sage out that makes her use her brain on Homelander in some yeah. way, you know, or make her, makes her use her thinking on, on Homelander. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, yeah, an interesting one. And Derek, what about your outstanding moment? Well, there's one final big reveal that we've kind of been talking about a little bit for the last couple of weeks as well. The big reveal that yeah. um, Billy Butcher, his personality is cracked in three. Um, it really is. Yeah. So, you know, we we had known since the beginning of the season that um, that he's seen his wife, Becca. We'd seen last season, his, he'd seen visions of his brother. Um, but as this growth on uh, on his brain is getting worse, he's created another personality which is joe kessler as we've seen uh, throughout the season played by jeffrey dean morgan um and this is his dark side this is all of his villainous thoughts all of his um hatred of soups poured into one character which is joe kessler he is someone that uh, billy butcher used to know um when they were in the army together but he didn't survive coming out of the army and it's revealed uh, here in this episode when uh, joe tells becca to shut the hell up um that he is another figment of Billy's imagination and just the person that he's been pouring his evil side into, effectively. Yeah, um, and his wife, yeah. Becca, is the good, the good side. side. Yeah. It is the angel and demon, like mm-hmm. we said last uh, episode. And yeah. I like the fact that it comes to the realisation here where Amir is saying, you know, I can't do the virus in yes. a week like you're asking me to. You know, the, the sheep's head with the pox is going stinky. I can't do this virus because... To do it to kill Homelander, it requires it to be unstable, airborne, and it would kill every soup on the planet. And you have, you know, this is music to the ears of Joe Kessler. Mm-hmm. To his wife, Becca, you suddenly starts coming to Kamiko, to Ryan, or the people were, you know, yeah. to Starlight. To Zoe, to Butcher himself, everybody that it, has any kind of V yeah. in their blood. It's not just soups who've reveal themselves or anything like that it's anybody who has any v in their blood it's kill it's every killed. soup yeah. on the planet it'd be genocidal mm-hmm. um by to create something that would be able to combat homeland yeah. and that's the frightening thing and this is where these you know, figments of the imagination sp- effectively crack against mm-hmm. one another uh, in terms of, of that choice yeah. that billy butcher now has to make like joe Custler even calls it the 
global uh, soup pandemic, effectively. Yeah. So that's how bad it would be. It would hit every single soup on the planet, every single person on the planet with V in their blood. So, um, so yeah, we finally get an answer to the death of Ezekiel as well. We hear Joe Custler saying he's the one that was in control of Billy Butcher's body killing Ezekiel effectively so um, it's not like Venom inside I think that was one of the suggestions that people had that it was a symbiote inside the black goo that's inside him comes out and and fights it's that um, these personalities take over his body sometimes Um, so we do have that question in my head occasionally you hear Joe Custler talking to somebody else like uh, in this case you hear him talking to the the doctor that's on the floor um, Samir and you wonder whether he sees those words coming out of Billy Butcher's mouth at all, or in, where we're seeing the alternate shots and we're hearing yeah. Billy shout or argue or talk to Joe Custler. Is he just seeing that side of it? Or is it like Fight Club where uh, where where Joe Custler's voice is coming out of Billy Butcher's mouth when other people are seeing it? You know, I just yeah, wonder exactly. about that. But, yeah. uh, but basically, that's what's happening. It is uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad, uh, all in control of Billy and Billy uh, losing control of himself as well. So uh, big reveal for the end of this episode. Excellent stuff. I think just one other quick thing to mm. say is we do get throughout this um episode as well uh kamiko kind of struggling a little but because she's trying to get to see frenchy in one of the correctional facilities where he's been taken Mm -hmm. uh, after handing himself in and it is kind of being rebuffed not so much by the correctional facility but by frenchy who doesn't want to to see her at this moment um and so we this kind of goes through the episode as well it does, and I, I really liked the scene with Huey talking to his mom and just explaining the situation. <laughs> I have this friend called Frenchy who um, killed a lot of people when he was working for a Russian gangster. Um, he's turned himself into the police, and Kamiko's really down because he didn't talk to her first. <laughs> his mother just looks at him and goes, what kind of people do you know? <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> who are your friends here? Um, yeah, really like that. Um, so, yeah, so Frenchy's still behind bars and not willing to talk to Kamiko at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good stuff. I think that's it for our chat about the sixth episode of The Boys Season 4. Overall, John, what did you think of the episode itself? I loved this episode. Um, For me, this was uh, five peanut brittle undies out of five. (laughs) I just, the seesaw of this episode, talking about treason, Mm -hmm. you know, the journey of Hugh just after spreading his father's ashes, uh, Tech Knight uh, gone and at least can be forgotten by everyone other than Ashley, who's going to be really upset mm. uh, at the loss of her uh, tickle stick partner. <laughs> um, I just thought it was really just done so well. I loved Elijah. I loved all of this stuff that really kind of was trying to see into that top 1% of these powerful people, um, all the 1% of the 1%, and actually mm-hmm. just realizing that, you know, there are people there because they feel that's their way to break free of people like this in the way that Sister Sage and Victoria Newman are there. Yeah. There are people there for the the sheer power of it um the inherited power of it mm-hmm. or just the the debauchery the violence whether it's to themselves or other people in a intimate safe word setting mm. or whether um it's the deep and the new black noir mm-hmm. um here you know and i like that this counters against everything that hugh is and seemingly a train uh experiences for the first yeah. time really. yeah yeah so i i kind of really enjoyed this mm-hmm. um and some of the lines were just pure also gold fill fill yes yeah. <laughs> i thought you were going there as well <laughs> and so uh, yeah. five peanut brittle undies out of five excellent uh, derek what about yourself Overall, love this episode. I think just from the opening of uh, of Web Weaver, we have one of our um, wonderful uh, fellow hosts, Chris, who's a massive Spider Man fan, and seeing uh, what they did to uh, the boys universe's version of Spider Man uh, at the opening of the episode set everything up for us. Uh, and again, knowing that that's who Tech Knight thought was in the costume and what he was doing to him for the episode, it just seems like 
directly at Spider-Man and Spider-Man fans as well, which made me laugh a lot. It's a shame Chris couldn't be on for the episode. Yeah, I'd love absolutely. to know uh, his reaction to this one. I know he's seen the episode already as well, um, but he hasn't He hasn't got back to me, Dan. He hasn't told me whether he liked this one or not. I don't I'm know. sure he did. <laughs> with know. a lot of hand sanitizer, yeah, of course. Absolutely. There's not enough Purell in the world yeah. uh, to deal with that. But overall, really like the episode. Love the reveals as well of the plan and, yeah. uh, of course, the scary uh, use of what's what they were going to do with Tech Knight's prison as well. That's a, that's a big uh, a big reveal in itself of effectively Homelander led um, Handmaid's Tale, right? Uh, in fact, kind of, or every human is treated as sub uh, human. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But on that note, I think we need to go and get a pint and some. I think a pint snacks. and dare I say it, some pig snacks yeah. are absolutely required. Yeah, some porky pig snacks, maybe. Like even a certain prime ministers have put some appendages well, into pigs' heads. Um, uh-huh. I guess pork snacks kind of uh, feels about right for this episode. It does. But fellow quizzes, fellow boys and girls, it is the boys season for pub quiz mm-hmm. so welcome to the bar and um, i was partially questioning whether i should do a um uh, an r-rated question <laughs> or whether i should do a pg friendly question but i've gone with the pg friendly yeah and yeah. um, question six from this episode what is the name of the correctional facility where frenchy is being held mm, very good very good john what's the question one more time what is the name of the correctional facility where Frenchie is being held? Fantastic. That's it. That's the sixth question of eight. Ooh, only two more episodes. Only two more. Yeah. Um, all you need to do is gather together the answers to all of those questions, correct, preferably, and email them to us at the end of the season to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com to be able to chance of getting your hands on some The Boys Season 4 goodies. Uh, if you have missed any of the questions, you can pop on over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com. There's a little pub quizzes button up at the top of the screen, and you'll have a list of all the questions we've asked so far. So keep jotting down the answers and send them in to us at the end of the season. Yes. Great stuff. That's it for our episode six coverage. Thanks so much for joining us, fellow boys and girls, for the uh, utter depravity of the tech cave. Um, Hopefully you'll be back with us next week for the seventh episode of The Boys, the penultimate episode of the season with The Insider. Who's The Insider, John? Mm, I think I know. Is it A-Train? Could be. I guess it's A-Train. Actually, <laughs> I'd say so. The minute I thought about it, uh, or maybe Newman when she finds out about the uh, the correctional facilities being used, maybe as, uh, yeah, in term yeah. camps, might not like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll find out next week. Excellent stuff. Yeah, thanks so much, fellow boys and girls, for joining us. Until next week's episode and next week's podcast. Remember, keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep sanitizing. Bye, bye. <laughs>